last time I made the melody, but since then, off camera, I have made one more lead, as well as increasing the BPM to 220. But apart from that, everything's very much the same, and that third lead was made in the same way as I made the first. It's just an octave lower. So now what I'm going to do is make the kick. I always make kicks in a separate project to the main one, and because kick making takes forever, and I'd rather not have like a two hour long video, you know, I just did it before, and then I'm going to show you the plugin chains instead. <laughs> so instead of starting with a 9 and 9 like I do with hardstyle kits, in Speedcore, what I do is I get a serum and then make this basics patch. So, it's quite a simple sound. It's a bit quiet. But yeah, it sounds like that. There isn't really much going on. It's just this sine wave with a remap, like this. <clears throat> with a triangle wave with the random turned all the way down and this comb filter going through only the oscillator A with quite a lot of res and about halfway cut off it's a comb minus filter then no effects as well as this LFO that causes the pitch of the waves to go down and it lands on E. Because that's the key of the melody. I decided to change it because I felt like doing E instead. So now I can start adding the effects on. And first effect is Camel Crusher, it's just the basic British clean preset. Still sounds pretty much just all low end at the moment. Then an EQ, it just reduces around these frequencies. And the reason why there's no low cut this time is because a speaker kick has a much more overdriven tone than a hard style kick, so you don't need that low cut. Then Venom. Balance is quite high here and a pretty large amount of drive as well. I also slightly move the tone up, but only a little bit. Then EQ, quite a big peak here because this is the going to be the strong frequency. Then I cut out just a bit here. Okay, now a shaper box again. This makes it have the real crunchy drive sound. Uh, with the high band all the way up to the max. And then this mid band, while it looks small, is actually quite important. The small band frequencies here. If I had just used a mid on maximum drive, for some reason it just doesn't sound the same, I'm not sure why, like it's something to do with this small band of frequencies, but I'm not sure what. And then the lows just driven about 50%. After that, I finally start low cutting, as well as a cut here. This doesn't really change much of the sound, I just took out a few frequencies. Then, Mistortion 2. This has quite a lot of soft clip, but now I'm no hard clip. Which makes the crunch have a quite a different tone. Now I just do some more adjustments with an EQ, again boosting this area. After that, OTT, 
to smooth out all the frequencies, make everything more balanced. The reason why I do try to avoid using OTT on kicks is because it uh, destroys the bass a lot of the time. You can fix this later on by just adding in a completely different bass, but I generally prefer not to do that. But here I did it, so I guess it just depends. Then another British clean, just the default preset with British clean, didn't change anything. Another EQ, again cutting out this frequency, and a low cut, and then another camel crusher on British clean, but I turned down the mech and turned up the tube. After that, I put it into Edison and got this. So I cut off the front part and leave, leaving just the back part. So this will be the tail, the high part of the tail. Then to make the low part of the tail, I took the same wave from the serum, but with no effects on it. So that creates this. As you've already heard. So at the moment, this is what they sound like together. It's not bad, but just a bit of layering would be good. So on the high one, cut out all of the bass, because that's going to be taken up by the other one. Then I use Neutron to add some saturation. Pretty much any saturation will work here, I think. Then finally an EQ to cut out the bass again, because the saturation added some bass. Then you can make the sub pretty simple, just cut out all of the highs. And finally, on the tail bus, where both of these channels are linked to, I just have a camel crusher on British Clean again, but with the mech turned off. Layers them together. Okay, now the top. The top's the hardest part. Because you don't want to make it too punchy. Because otherwise the punch will drown out the tail of the kick, but then at the same time you don't want it to have no punch. So finding the balance is pretty hard. So first we have just a normal kick. I cut out all of the highs because this is going to be the base. Then British Clean again. As you can see I do love that preset quite a lot. Yeah, and this is just pretty much the same as the regular British Clean preset. Nothing has changed. After that, I have this tick, which is made from the same sample as the top part of the tail. I just cut it really short with a generic bleeding to fade it out. And then that has first an EQ, take out the base again. Then another British Clean. Camel Crusher. Then there's this big spike right here with a lot of the highs taken out. That was to make sure that it wasn't too clicky. And then after that, another British Clean. Again with the mech taken out. Then the final thing is just this. This is again from the, the tail sample, but this time I cut off the front, like the very front, and then the rest of the tail, which leaves just this tiny portion of the kick that's still in the top part of the sample, but it doesn't have the very front part, which is the clicky part. As you can see, if I, if I do that, 
then the top comes back. And all I did to this was just cut out the lows. So that's what it sounds like together. After that, I link these to their bus, which is the top bus, and just put them through a British clean with no mech. There we go. <clears throat> so now at the moment, everything sounds like this. So you can hear there's this weird stuttering sound between when the top and the tail join together. And that is taken out by a compressor. Any compressor will work. I just use Pumper because it's easier. But anything with a fairly short attack and delay would do. And finally a limiter. So uh, the only thing I changed in this was the limiting part, which just cuts off a bit of the dynamic range, which smooths out the transition between the top and the tail even more. Then you can just put that in person. Here's a quick tip. While you're sampling stuff into Edison, you'll see all this noise that's created by this effects chain. You can just get rid of that. And then there we go. You can test the kicks out in the Edison by just setting the button here, turning that on, and then it will just loop the part that you select. Also, if you don't like how the tone of the tail sounds, like in this case I think it might sound a little weird, you can shift scroll wheel on the sample to move it slightly left or right. And this can actually change how it sounds. And I think that sounds a little bit better. And now let's test that. And there we go. That is a bit better. Then you can just save that. I already saved one here, but I'll just overwrite it. Now we need to pitch the kick. So I'm going to go do that now. Just need to go load up audition. So once you're in audition, just get the kick. Then copy it in. Now you want to find the tail part. But then you don't want to get any of the top. So you need to find that place where it joins. So I think just here is good. Then you can go to time and pitch, stretch and pitch. Make sure the audition setting is selected. Then just go for pitch shift. Then shift it however many semitones you need for the track. So you can see in the project we have the lower notes, these lower notes will usually tell you what pitch the kick needs to be. So it will be E, F sharp, G, E, G, F sharp, E.
So we already have the kick on E. Now let's do the one in F sharp. That is two semitones up. There we go. So then I'll just save that. And then Control Z to go back to the original pitch and three semitones for G. Save that. There we go. And then we go back to the FL Studio and drag the kicks in. And then arrange them to fit with the melody. So I just put them to one bar, and then I, so that I can decide a kick pattern later. So I just need to. At this point, I just need to put the kicks to the correct pitches at the correct times. So like that. There we go. And now from that I can change the length. And then I can just make a pattern. When making speed call kick patterns, I like to have a lot of really fast bits. And unlike in other genres, you don't have to have the kick rolls at the end of the bar. You can just do kick rolls anywhere. So I'm going to do like that. Yeah, the important part is to just keep it interesting. even make some bit slower. And one important pattern that I like to use a lot is the pattern that I'm about to make here, where it goes fast, slow, fast, slow. So you have a fast bit. Then a slower bit, then another fast bit, like that. That's my favorite pattern, not use the same pattern over and over again. You want to vary up the patterns quite a lot. And it's a good idea to split them into either bars or just split them into small sections and then do each section separately. So I'll go and do this for the rest of the kicks in like a fast forward or something. See you later. I think this sounds good. Here is what it sounds like. And now I can just color them and add them to a mixer. You can also do the step before making the kick pattern. I just forgot to do it. 
<clears throat> All the kicks, I don't really add that many effects. Although, if I'm using more than one kick in a track, which I probably will for this one, I like to make a kicks bus, which is separate from the drums bus. The reason why is because kicks are usually heavily processed already before they go into the door. So they won't need as much processing as the rest of the drums. One thing I do like to put is a neutron. And just give everything a slightly more transient. So let's compress a little bit. You can turn that down actually. There we go. So the kicks do sound a bit quiet compared to the leads, but we can fix that later. So anyway, have a nice day and goodbye. <laughs>